Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Guess what day it is? Order <laughs> box day. Um, I actually only just did last night my April scholar challenge, um, and the May box has arrived um, today. So let's waste no time waffling. Let's get straight on with it. <laughs> one ripping you in let's say just one little ripping you into your art supplies what's it going to be now it feels quite weighty actually Ooh. Ooh. so for anybody who's not seen this box before it's a monthly subscription box um, I think the current price is 16.95 off the top of my head um, and it's just um, a complete surprise. It will always be art supplies, but other than that, it could be anything. It could be pencils, paints, pastels, pens, a mixture of all those things. <laughs> There's always some kind of a substrate in there and various other bits and bobs, which um, I'll cover as we go through. <laughs> so it's a complete. They don't let out any spoilers or anything beforehand, and I will be careful to make sure my thumbnail just shows the box not, not the not the content so it's not to spoil it for anyone who might be waiting a bit longer for their box to get through so there's always a little bit of a clue from the zine because this usually um the cover is made a part of the featured artwork so a little bit of a clue there certainly to the colors it's looking a bit sort of painty isn't it mm. don't want to look too hard here's the featured artwork oh isn't that beautiful right up my street <gasps> lovely alicia yetzer southern california love that very inspiring um so as i say always some kind of substrate usually a pad of some sort of paper but sometimes we've had things like artboard so this is watercolor paper 190 gsm so uh, reasonably but heavyweight but not not too heavy bit of a textured bit of a tooth to it a bit smoother on the other side okay so the most exciting part go into the box <laughs> is here this is this is the this is the exciting bit <laughs> it's like a little birthday present to myself every month Ooh, you always get a little sticker I've got quite a collection of these now I've covered the, the a, a couple of art journals with them um, and, and I've got um, a few that I haven't done anything with yet but I've got a bit of a plan for them so that's obviously is part of this um, usually the, the cover is part of the featured artwork but in this case it's not there's always a little this is a menu card with a I've not let myself look yet <laughs> which gives you a little summary of all the supplies in the box I'm not going to look at that until I've, I've had a look um, and there's always a scholar challenge for the month this one is flowing figures I'm not going to read any more yet <gasps> I'm so excited now this is something I've never tried before there's always a sweetie and it usually uh, kind of goes with the colour scheme it's sort of transparent isn't it orange and transparent kind of goes um what's this some kind of rubber i think it's a needable eraser but it's yes it is it says there needable eraser or putty rubber as we used to call them when i was in art school many years ago we used to call them putty rubbers but we call them needed erasers now i think rubbers mean something else in other countries okay i've never seen a yellow needed eraser they usually kind of there we go I guess it's probably two mashed together at the moment so that's normally the color of my party rubbers so quite nice to have a fun color one this is the exciting part Exclu so scholar bots quite often have um, exclusive collections from different um, brands and things so exclusive peerless watercolors palette I've oh, I've heard about this oh oh very exciting something completely different to try look at so you just you wet these and use them like water it's watercolor paint in the card i believe arlie's opera what's the, what's the featured artist called arlie oh yeah well arlisha 
So I wonder if this is Shakmino red, a Lizarin red, Alice blue, turquoise blue. Oh wow, look at these on the back. Peacock blue. Oh, they're all interesting on the back as well. Mountain green, heliotrope, loads of them. Ecru, Gamboge yellow, Bismarck brown, a neutral tint. Oh, this is going to be very exciting. So then we, we've got a brush as well. I never used a brush this shape before. Comes to a lovely point. And this looks like a, a mechanical pencil. I can't look at how to use it. I'm being stupid. Oh, that's it. So you press that and a little bit of the lead comes out. Oh, that felt lovely and it feels nice to hold. It's a pentel. These are beautiful. Oh, this is very exciting. I'm thinking I will probably need to um, maybe find a tin to keep these in. I wonder why that one is. That's bigger than all the others. Look at that. Okay, so I know nothing really about these. So let's have a look, see what it says on here first. So peerless watercolour sheets, pack of 12 custom colours. Get creative with this custom palette of colours that was specially selected by none other than our featured artist. Ah, so when it says Arlie's Opera, yeah, she must be called Arlie for short. The perfect travel companion for watercolour on the go. A concentrated deposit of high intensity pigment on each sheet ensure vibrant, and intense colour for any painting project. Very versatile, can be used by adding water directly to each sheet to activate the pigment. Just be sure to double check which side you use. For reference, the names of the colours are printed on the back of each sheet and the pigment is laid on the other side. Oh, good job they said that. So I just thought, okay, so that is the, the actual colour. Okay, right. Worth bearing in mind, otherwise, I would have been a little bit disappointed when they didn't work, wouldn't I? <laughs> Pentel side effects, mechanical pencil, innovative pencil design equipped with a larger retractable. It says easer, but I'm thinking it probably means eraser. How does it? How does it? Am I being stupid? I can't see how you. You can see there's an eraser there, and I can't work out how to get it out. If I push that, that just makes the lead come out. So. Oh, look, you just turn that. Oh, wow. That is lovely to use. Yeah, impressed with that. Need a bit of razor. This is called a custom angled brush. Zahn. Z-A-H-N. Densely packed bristles designed to hold water and pigment, allowing for perfect control. This brush will hold a precise fine point for details, springing back into shape after every stroke and will reliably deposit pigment evenly and consistently every time. And then we've got hot pressed watercolour paper pad. Features a lovely smooth, so hot pressed is nice because it isn't, that's what the HP is I should have realised. I think I've got some pigment on there. So it's much smoother than cold pressed would be, which I prefer. You can't always find it though. I always find it, it's, you know, a lot of shops don't seem to keep the hot press. I don't know why. Perfect pairing for any water-based medium, blah, 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 blah. Okay, need to do some swatching. Okay, I'm going to stop filming a second while I go and get some water. Right, I've been and got two jars of water so I can have one for just for cleaning off the brush in between. Um, I'm just thinking I might just have a quick look at the magazine before because that will usually have some tips in about how to use them. So, on a whim, the perfect shape brush for whimsical shapes and creations. It is an unusual shape, this brush. I don't think I've ever used one quite that shape before. So here's Ali Shigetza, obviously Ali for short. How do you capture personality in your portrait paintings? Love these. I'd love to be able to do I'd love to be able to do that. I'll have a good old look at that later on. So things to try. Make sure to use the correct side, yeah. When you working with watercolour, it's important to work with your lighter colours first and slowly build up depth and texture with your darker colours. 
They're semi-transparent, so lighter tones won't build well on darker tones. It's also important to remember to leave, if you need white space, remember to <laughs> work that out first and leave it white. You can lift watercolour pigment directly off the paper by adding a little water to the area and gently dabbing with tissue. Yep, you can. That's, that's something I have tried. Try to think in terms of foreground and background when painting, work in layers, starting with the things that are furthest away. Keep your water to paint ratio in mind. Too much water can dilute, dilute the pigment. Watercolour paints are very versatile and can be layered. However, keep in mind that the paint will reactivate your water. Yeah, so if you, you don't want to sort of reactivate them when you don't want to. OK, so I might try blending some colours and things as well when I swatch. Artist's advice. Peerless watercolours always offer such a unique painting experience. When starting a new project, I usually like to begin by swatching all of my colours and picking a few for a limited palette. Yeah, because there are quite a lot of colours there, aren't there? They're very vibrant, so I often like to create subtler mixes of a few colours to better control the saturation. Oh, be me, I'll just get all the colours out, won't I? I can see the wisdom of that though. Usually like to work from light to dark. Makes sense, I think they've said that over here as well. I love to make the darkest areas the most saturated. Pops of colour in shadows and the creases of eyelids are so fun to create with these supplies. I do, I love how she's used some unexpected colours in there. Absolutely, I love that face. Um, behind the artwork for this piece, I wanted something that felt ethereal and powerful. Yes, yeah, it's, it's funny to think that ethereal and powerful sounds like a contradiction in terms, but I think she's achieved that there. Oh, and here's the Scholar Gallery. So this was uh, was it Bionic Being? Yeah, Bionic Being, and we had. Um, kind of different shades, I think six different shades of grey in markers. <laughs> oh, look, oh, the colour cave, yay! <laughs> All these different ideas people came up with. <laughs> look at this toaster. Toaster crab. <laughs> oh, little cute little personality there. Oh, look. Better look at some of those later. And then there's always a, an article at the back. To do you know to do with the theme of the box look at those faces very inspiring okay enough waffle on let's do some swatching so hot pressed papers so it's, it's quite smooth it's not that smooth i've had much smoother hot pressed paper actually but it's yeah relatively smooth okay so let's try all of these colors now let's try the pencil first Nice pencil, let's bring you down a little bit. There we go. Nice pencil, and then let's get my rubber out. <laughs> I hope you can get, I'm sure you can get refills for that. And of course, we've got the kneadable eraser as well. I can never resist sniffing them. Okay, let's wake up this lovely brush. It is a lovely shape. I'm looking forward to trying this. So, um, Bismarck Brown. I'm just going to take them as they come, I think. Woo! Wow. That was just a tiny little one. You just touched the surface of that. Nice. Oh, I'm going to love these. Uh, this one is Gamboge Yellow. So remembering that it's the other side to where the name is. So I've just literally just touched there. Uh, oh, I probably should have washed my brush off a bit better, I think. Lots of pigment, isn't there? That's why all the backs of them look so interesting. Because... <laughs> That's where the paint is. <laughs> what all the processes do you think they uh Ooh, what is this one called? Ecru. Do you think they spray them or use big brushes or something? I wonder how they do it. Mountain green. Oops. Oh, that is a lovely colour. Oh. 
beautiful peacock blue. Turquoise blue. Ooh, look at that. What a convenient way to take your paints around with you. you know, just let them all dry off, pop them in your bag with a water brush. That's all you need, isn't it? Alice blue. It's almost like a cobalt sort of colour, isn't it? I love when they give uh, colours interesting names. So that's called Heliotrope. That's a real kind of... Oh, almost like a plum colour, sort of. Alizarin red. That's a nice red. That's sort of pinkish red. I don't know how you say that. Jacmino, Jacmino. Oh, look at that on the back. <laughs> so another kind of red. I'll have to go down here now. Oh, it's not what I was expecting. It's quite opaque almost if it's got some white in it and it's kind of really pink actually so then this one is Ali's Opera I'm assuming Opera is going to be some kind of a pink um, and this must be custom made for Alicia the featured artist Ooh, it's a real um, yeah like another mm, Kind of warm pinky red, lovely colours for um, portraits. And this is neutral tint. Oh, look, I managed to get that wet when I didn't mean to. I'm going to spread these out to dry in a minute. Let's go over here. That's quite um, a blue. It's almost like a bit Payne's grey looking to me. Okay. They are beautiful. One thing I do want to try as well, I may as well just use this bit that's already kind of wet down here. Just want to see what shapes I can get with this brush as well. Hmm. Yeah. It's an unusual shape. You can't. If it was a round brush, I could go like that and make like a bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to try layering a couple over the top of each other. I think. Let's try layering this scambo's yellow over the top of this. citrusy colour and what if I put it over the top of this oh I'm going to enjoy playing with these wow this is something really different so if I wanted to say I wanted to mix okay Alice Blue in this Gambo's Yellow And I want to properly mix them. Ah, right, now I've got a lovely green. Well, I think I might have to take the time to do a proper, full on, methodical swatching with this, but I don't think I'm going to do it now because this video will just get too long. I want to, to mix all the colours with each other, so I'll probably line all the colours along here, all the colours down here, and mix them all together and see 
how much variety I can get before I even start to do anything. Uh, yeah, absolutely thrilled to bits with this, thrilled to bits. Not quite sure, I suppose I need to spread them out to dry really, because I don't want them to mix together as they're drying, do I? I'm so excited. So let's just, before I go, let's just have one more look at the smaller challenge and see what that says so I can start, I like to start mulling that over. Look at the amount of pigment in that. I think these will last for ages, won't they? So I want to have a, a look, I want to just see how much they are as well. So a pack of 12 custom colours. Oh, it's only 12 99 I thought it was going to say more than that. I think that seems very reasonable to me, actually. I'll be interested to see how I how I get on with those. I always like to have a quick tot up. So uh, 13, 14, 15. That's about, I don't know, off the top of my head, it's about sort of 25 quid's worth. So... I really expected that set of, of peerless watercolours to be to be more. So what else does it say about the challenge? Uh, in this month's box we're encouraging you to experiment with expressing personality through watercolour. Take inspiration from the whimsy of surrealism. What colours represent the moment you're in right now? Allow your paint to flow into your figures and portraits to form your unique character traits. I'm a bit... I'm a bit confused. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that means. I'll have to read it again. Um, I think probably I'll just end up uh, just having a go at some watercolour portraits. I love doing portraits anyway. Um, I, I think what I'm confused is usually it kind of, to me, relates more to the inspiration piece. And um, I love, absolutely love that. But I'm not getting surrealism. But maybe that's just me. Allow paint to flow into your figures and portraits to form your unique character traits. I mean, certainly, um, Arlesia is expressing personality through watercolour there. Yeah. I'm going to ignore the surrealism bit for now. <laughs> I'm going to um, probably, right now, I'm going to start binge watching something and have a good old swatch of all of these um, and see what kind of uh, range of colours I can get. Um, and then have a go at some portraits over the next few days. I love doing portraits. This couldn't be, yeah, this uh, this box suits me right down to the ground. Love it. Okay, um, let me know what you think. <laughs> I think a lot of people are going to be really chuffed with this box, actually. Um, what's not to like? Okay, well, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that interesting, and I will see you again really soon. Bye!